Welcome to Ninja's Papers. Today we're going to talk about adding some quick and easy rust effects to your steel. All right, now there's a lot of different weathering products that you can use in order to add rust effects and weathering effects to your steel model or anything that was metal or painted, anything with pits in it. it, it there's a plethora out there, uh, including you know different kind of enamels, uh, AK Interactive streaking effects, AK Interactive have a lot of different things that you can use. I have that. Um, you can use different kinds of inks, like an orange ink with a uh, nice sepia ink will create that kind of effect if you want to play around with smooth blends and tones. Uh, there's even powders and kind of pigments that you can use. This one's uh, Tamaya Weathering Master. Uh, different, different kind of shades of, of different powders that you can use as well. I have everything from grounded down pigments to all kinds of things, but with the soul shackles, which I'm gonna be painting up in this video, I wanted to make something a little bit interesting, but I want it to be quick and easy. Um, I was struggling on how to make this model stand out because it is very one dimensional, even though it's a three dimensional model. Well, let's go down to the table town so I can show you what I'm talking about. Let's talk about some soul shackles. Now, literally chains coming out of the ground. Now, the ability in the game is kind of interesting because it can hold up people around it and slow things down for charges and, and walking around. But when it comes to the model itself, it's like underwhelming. All right, so I use some AK Interactive uh, dirt and... Um, all right, now I'm going to prime everything up. I just wanted to blend that into the base. Again, really difficult for me to make it interesting. I guess I could have gone in a lot of different directions, but I, it was a model that I kind of just wanted to color it done. All right, so really quickly, I'm just going to uh, paint it silver. I told you how to paint it silver, and then I'm going to add those rust effects to it so you can see exactly what I'm talking about. All right, so... Here I'm adding a uh, darker gray. You can add any gray to gray. I'm using steel from a Vallejo metal color. And then on the top, I'm using a, um, a chrome effect from Vallejo metal color as well. I'm just doing a zenithal. Um, and that's going to add some depth to what we're going to do later on, um, which is to add some kind of rusting and brown effects to it. All right, so what I'm going to do right now is just going to blend in the base um, a little willy-nilly, no masking. Uh, I do want to show that the actual uh, dirt itself got onto the miniature, so I'm not really uh, too concerned with it. And I'm going to add some tufts in there um, from uh, Worldwide Scenics. There's a lot of different places you get tufts from, kind of like these. Uh, they serve a purpose and I kind of want to integrate them. Now I'm going to paint the tough and just spread the love around the entire base giving us a little bit of a green earth kind of effect maybe a little bit of mold going on, on the ground a little bit and it's just a, a little bit of green wash that I'm just going to throw down in there. All right so next up I'm going to do the base and you know we're just about done. We're just about done. These are like one of the easiest models I think I've ever painted. Uh, but then again, you know, it's just not a very dynamic in my opinion. All right. Here's where we come up to the quick and easy way uh, and part where we are actually doing some weathering effects. And with all the techniques that I've used so far and all the products that I've used so far, uh, I endorse uh, game effects from Vallejo, weathering dry rust and oxidized rust or just regular rust. So it's that orange rust and it's that brown rust effects. Now, I use synthetic brushes when I paint this on the rust effects. Do not, do not use the rust effects uh, through an airbrush at all. You don't want to use any of this stuff through an airbrush at all. It will clog, I, my experience, clog up your airbrush significantly. So stay away from that. Use synthetic brushes, uh, not your Kolinsky sables uh, because there's texture in here and uh, that texture actually transfers onto the model. So it's a quick and easy way to add a little bit of texture as well as that rust affecting colors. Now, you do have to take in consideration one thing when you're using this. Yes, dilute it, okay? Um, but also, keep in mind that you want to take a look at a reference photo. 
Take a photo of something that is rusting. You're gonna notice where it is oxidizing and orange as to oppose where it's puddling and brown, right? So usually in the recesses, it would be brown and the fresh rust will be on the actual pitted object is going to be a little orange around that and take that into consideration. Also, when metal is uh, scraping against metal, like the chains that we have here, right? You're gonna have fresh rust on the actual contact points and then dripping down, you'll have that uh, pooling effect of brown rust towards the bottom of things. And if you keep that into perspective, and again, use photo references to help you decide where to place this rust, uh, but quick and easy, puddles on the bottom, brown, usually fresh rust is usually orange and stuff like that, and play around with these paints to get different kinds of effects to what you feel comfortable with. All right, well, enough of me speaking. Let's get back to that table town. All right, table town again. And what we're going to do here is just gonna add the dark pulling effects. I'm just making a decision where uh, rust would gather if it was exposed to the elements such as this. And um, it's just rather easy. And, and it goes with any steel, really. Whenever you're doing any kind of steel objects, just really determine where it's going to gather. I wanted to be quick and easy with this. And this model, I mean, these three models took just almost like no time at all to get done. And that was one of the things I wanted to do. I wanted to work on speed and I wanted to just show you a quick and easy technique to do it. So again, just like in nature, I like to pool it in different areas. So normally when you're doing a wash, you say, don't let it pool. Well, this one, I don't mind. I don't mind if it pulls and it has that little bit of texture in it, a little rough grit when it uh, dries. And it, I love it. I, I really do like rust effects from Vallejo game uh, effects. And it's really cool and inexpensive compared to a lot of other different kind of things out there. Um, so, and then going on to all three. Now, one of the things I don't like, I uh, don't like to do is to usually uh, daisy chain my painting, but in this case here, it just makes sense to do it. So if you're actually doing the soul shackle, I recommend you just use the paint and go on to the next one and move on to the next one. Now, interesting model itself you can go a lot of different directions to make it interesting you can make um them look like they were glowing hot magma uh coming from the bottom and given that sin life source uh from the bottom as well to add some dimension to it i could have gone in that direction and you know hindsight is 2020 so i wasn't really thinking about it okay adding the orange rust now here and there just uh speckling it in kind of here and there on the top where i think the uh metal itself would start grinding into each other or touching any kind of contact points uh, as well that you would think that dry rust I mean fresh rust would gather and that orange is really contrasty so you can overdo it be careful all right now sometimes my favorite color for a miniature is done and this sucker is done and I'm really happy with it um, there are other things that he could have done with it there are a lot of different ways now in retrospect or, or hindsight I could have made them glowing red steel as if they were molten out of lava or something like that if I wanted to go with that kind of theme but I wasn't highly interested in uh, a lot of the details that were in this model. Like, it's not a striking model. It's literally just chains coming out of the ground. And I struggled making it interesting. And in the end, I'm happy with it. And it's in my cabinet. Can't wait to get it on the table for a battle report. All right, well, if you do like this video, press that like button, share with others, kindest thing you can do, get the word out of the miniature paintbrush, and subscribe for more content. And I'll catch you next time on the Miniatures Paintbrush.